burglary, uh, and we had arrests for rioting. Um, I want to uh, again mention the fact that we are working uh, right now with our investigative team uh, to compile images of anybody that was in our city over the past three or four nights who was involved in destruction of property uh, or the throwing of missiles and the hurting of people. Uh, we will be releasing those images. We're going to ask uh, the community uh, to assist us with identifying those folks so that they can be held uh, accountable. Uh, with that being said, we can uh, take any questions, I believe, Mayor, that anyone has. What order are you talking about? Somebody gave the officers in Lafayette Park the order to use munitions against peaceful protesters. Are you, talk, are you talking about the presidential movement? Yes. Uh, the presidential movement was handled by uh, federal uh, resources. I became, uh, I was uh, told of the movement. It was an unplanned movement uh, shortly before it occurred. Uh, and the Metropolitan Police Department did not participate, so it would be uh, out of turn for me to speak about you know who, what, where, and uh, how uh, munitions were deployed. Do you, have, do you have an opinion on the fact that those munitions were deployed against protesters? I, I don't know the circumstances. So as, as I gather more detail, I may be able to develop an opinion on that. Does the mayor, uh, do you have a comment on, on what happened there last night, Mayor? From what I could see, just like you all um, could see, I, I didn't see any provocation that would warrant um, the deployment of munitions, um, and especially for the purpose of moving the president across the street. I noted last night in a tweet you called it shameful. Uh, do you think that overnight may be a stronger word, perhaps? I said what I said. I stand behind it. Yep. Uh, uh, Chief, going back to well, somebody define munitions and tell us exactly what type of munitions were deployed either by your department or what you know was deployed during the. Movement. So I can only talk for my department, and and uh, uh, you know this is a very fluid activity. So all of any time we deploy munitions, our police officers are required uh, to report that, and we investigate that. Our internal affairs division uh, will go back, and they will re um, investigate every. Uh, deployment that we had. Uh, what we had used uh, last night and the time that we, uh, I can't say that we didn't use pepper spray at other points because uh, when you're making arrests of, of that nature, if anybody rushes the line, uh, a, an officer may utilize a pepper spray uh, to control that line. Uh, but the only incident in which we, that I believe that we deployed uh, sting balls and um, OC spray um, and CS uh, spray was um, when we were dealing with that last group of 300 protesters that was in the vicinity of uh, Judiciary Square. And then Chief, can you talk about, your, your officers did play a role, an active role, an aggressive role in the movement of the president. You, it, they cleared the intersect at, at 16th and I while the president was at St. John, St. John's Church. Your bicycle officers, dozens of them, moved all the protesters forcibly. In fact, one protester punched an officer during that movement was arrested. I don't know uh, what you're talking about with regards to, uh, to that, Mark. I can tell you that the, the way that the, generally the, the operation worked for the Metropolitan Police Department. Uh, at about 6.30, almost 6.30 on the dot, uh, well, preceding this, uh, we the mayor and I went out uh, and made it abundantly clear that there would be a curfew here in the District of Columbia starting at 7 p.m., uh, and I think that was widely known. Uh, there was an alert that was sent to all cell phones in the area uh, that there would be a curfew uh, beginning uh, tonight, or well, last night at 7 p.m., and that if you were out past 7 p.m., uh, you could be subject to arrest. So that was to give folks uh, fair warning. If, uh, if you had an essential activity, if you had to vote, um, you know, or if you were a member of the media, it did not apply to you. So we wanted to make it abundantly clear to folks. Uh, at 6.30 p.m. last night, uh, in addition to those warnings that were given uh, to the public, we had uh, announced on our PA systems uh, to the group that was gathered uh, down at Lafayette Park that there was a curfew in effect and they could be subject to arrest. Uh, at that point, some of the groups began to march uh, around the city. Uh, the, the group that was stopped uh, at 16th and I, 17th and I Street, was one of those groups that was in violation of the curfew. So that was not, that stop at 17th and I 
was not related to the presidential right. movement. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about before 7 o'clock, while the president was at St. John's, at 16th and I, the federal law enforcement officers, Park Police, Arlington Police, D.C. National Guard, had moved the protesters down I Street away from, I mean, down 16th Street away from Lafayette Square. They got to I Street, and that's where the federal entities made their stand, made their permit right at 16th and I. Okay. At that point. So that's away from St. John's, significantly away from St. John's is what you're saying. Away. Well, that's, okay, in, so in, in an operation like that, it's not in the vicinity of the president. So uh, your insinuation that somehow the Metropolitan Police Department was involved in the movement of the president, I think, is inaccurate. I'll go back and look at our operation to ensure that that was the case. So you're not aware that your officers moved protesters, at, forcibly moved protesters, one of the protesters punched one of your officers? You're not aware of any of that happening? I, I don't have that information, but I can tell you this, we were not in, involved uh, in the movement of the president, the unplanned movement of the president. Yes. Um. Thank you, Chief. Could you tell us, you said that the D.C. Police Department did not participate in the federal action yesterday around the White House and Lafayette Park. So had you been asked to? You said you only learned of it shortly before it happened. Had you been asked to participate, or did you just not know about it? So prior to uh, the event, we had drawn uh, clear areas of responsibility with our federal partners. Uh, that area down there, uh, right to the north of Lafayette Square, was a federal responsibility. I'd like to follow up on that. Today, the, the Secret Service has closed several District of Columbia streets, streets that you normally patrol. Under what authority does the Secret Service have to close, and maybe the mayor wants to respond to it, to close city streets that we would normally otherwise use, except for this police action? by the White House? Uh, the Secret Service, as you know, has the authority to move the president around the United States. And I know that there is a presidential movement un, uh, underfoot right now. And they have to, sometimes they have to close streets uh, in order to make those movements. Well, Mayor, may I ask you a question? Yes. You have been quite critical of what the White House and the president and federal people have done. But you're also aware of the District's 1973 Home Rule Act, where the president, the stroke of a pen, and essentially take control of the D.C. Police Department. Not exactly right. Well, I said essentially. Essential, well, well kind of essentially. <laughs> I would regard that as a affront to even our limited home rule um, in the safety of the District of Columbia. Absolutely. Have you gotten any indication that the White House is considering doing that? And that prompted maybe your press conference at 5 o'clock yesterday. Let me just say this, and Tom, uh, you you know um, that I, I have a lot of conversations on behalf of the residents of the District of Columbia. Some of them I can discuss fully, uh, and some I will give you the gist of. Uh, and it's this. I think that uh, you heard the president yesterday uh, that he wanted to show a force uh, in D.C., uh, and uh, we know uh, that they examined a lot of ways to do that. Are you aware of the, the bishop of the Episcopal bishop who on several occasions now has, has denounced what the president did by using St. John as a photo op, waving a Bible around? Do you have any personal reaction to that? Uh, I heard her remarks um, on one of the morning shows today, our office, and in fact, uh, I wanted to reach her yesterday. I didn't get a chance to, so I will try to reach her today. Uh, I toured St. John's uh, yesterday, as you know, as, as far in as we could get into the fire damage. Uh, we are, are grateful that our DC Fire and EMS uh, got to the church and was able to extinguish the fire uh, with with uh, relatively light damage to a basement area uh, outside um, of the main sanctuary of the church. So we're happy that that, that happened. Uh, we don't want to see any destruction or arson, graffiti, smashing, looting in our city. Uh, and the church was defaced, and we think that's a terrible thing. Uh, we rec I uh, appreciated the bishop's comments. Um, that she wasn't involved in uh, in that and um, was kind of appalled as the church being used as a backdrop. So just getting to the, the issue of police 
tactics here, the speaker to the chief, speaker to the mayor. Um, what happened in Lafayette Park, you're saying that there was an order to disperse, but general police practices in the district is multiple orders to disperse, not just one. And apparently protesters down there said they couldn't hear it. So there was that issue. And then there was video of helicopters coming pretty close to the ground to scatter people with sound and, and wind. Um, there's concern that National Guardsmen <coughs> could be armed. Um, I mean, this is the use of military resources in the district against peaceful protesters who are violating curfew true, but are you concerned that tactics by non-local police officers could escalate and could put DC residents at risk? Uh, as we mentioned, uh, we, we are concerned, but we become concerned about any um, police or non-policing force in the district that doesn't share our values and is not accountable to the chief of police or to me. Uh, having said that, uh, they're federal partners that we work with all the time uh, and that uh, whose assistance we did welcome and that were uh, police, uh, FBI police, DEA police that have supported us um, in various operations including demonstrations who are with us um, for a couple of nights during, during this response. Uh, I'm gonna ask the chief to speak uh, about uh, arming the National Guard uh, while we ask for the National Guard's assistance on uh, checkpoints, for, so to speak, around our per uh, perimeter um, to manage flow of traffic in and out and to manage that. We, do, we did not and do not request a armed guard uh, for any purpose uh, in the District of Columbia. Yes. Threat of use of military force combined with the use of helicopters buzzing the crowd. Do you fear that that strong arm message is going to inflame rather than calm the protest? This is what I, I, I hope and I know and what we observed last night. Uh, what we observed last night is uh, protesters largely complying with the curfew and we're gonna implore them to comply with the curfew again. Uh, the curfew is 7 p.m. and that doesn't mean you're leaving at 7 p.m. That means you're off the street at 7 p.m. Uh, and it's very important that everybody um, complies with the curfew. There are exceptions. Uh, if you are essential, if you're working, if you're voting, uh, then you are, are able to, to do all of those things. Uh, but we're asking people to comply with the curfew. Yes. Mayor Bowser, um, what did the federal government tell you about the options for increasing and showing force in D.C.? Um, I, I was told, uh, what, first of all, I heard what you all heard about the president saying that he wanted all manner of uh, civilian and military might deployed across the country in the district. Uh, so we we all heard uh, all heard that ominous warning. I later was told that they would be um, seeking, and we heard from jurisdictions um, nearby that they were seeking national guard support, uh, possibly um, army support, and federal police from other federal entities. Did you push back on any of these options? Absolutely. We uh, don't want uh, the armed uh, National Guard, armed military, and we don't want any of those things on D.C. streets. Federal assets and monuments and memorials are appropriate for federal assets. I already mentioned um, the federal police who uh, we have worked with and who are helpful to us from the FBI and, and DEA. Uh, that that have been helpful to us in establishing perimeters during this response. So how yes. Who have you reached out to the federal government? Uh, as I mentioned already, Fennett, uh, we have had a flurry of uh, conversations with federal, uh, with our federal folks um, in the White House, Maine Justice, and uh, involving the National Guard. Yes. Uh, our curfew will begin today, as um, mentioned in my mayor's order, at 7 p.m. 
uh, through 6 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, and you asked me if we have uh, concerns. Uh, we know that people have been voting in this primary, which is today, um, since May 22nd. Uh, they know the hours. They have 22 voting locations all across the District of Columbia uh, that they can go to. And polls are open until 8 p.m. And you won't have any problems going to vote anywhere in the District of Columbia through 8 p.m. today. Do you have concern about voters feeling scared to go and vote? I'm not concerned about voters feeling scared right now, because they can vote right now or, or any time today. Are the federal are the federal authorities and, and national guard aware of the fact that people are voting so that citizens don't have to explain what they're doing? The federal authorities and national guard, um, and we'll, we can make people aware of voting, um, but uh, I don't expect that they, that will be an issue. Yes. Mayor, were you aware that Arlington police were in the city last night assisting? And secondly, the county government there put out a statement saying that they pulled their officers out of the city based on what had happened in Lafayette Park. You have a comment on that? Well, I, I wasn't aware that they were here. Um, I can tell you that we didn't request mutual assistance. I saw a tweet um, from them, I think last night, um, saying that the mutual assistance um, process was abused. And I wanna make very clear that we didn't request mutual assistance. Um, and the for those, not familiar with the mutual assistance process. Sometimes, especially when we have large scale events, you are probably most familiar when we do the inauguration uh, and have to police that. We get we have a put a mutual assistance call out, not just to this region, but very widely to get um, support for a very large scale event. So it is not unusual for us uh, to call on us, uh, to call on our neighbors to assist but we did not make a mutual assistance a call to any police department or any uh, state national guard. Do you have a comment on the fact that they pulled their officers out because of what happened? Well, I might suggest that their officers shouldn't have been there in the first place. Yes. So, Chief, can you talk about what exactly happened on Swan Street? I mean, we saw, we all saw, beyond the people that got into the house, folks kind of hemmed in by, by, by officers on both sides of a relatively narrow street. Were there negotiations to let them out? Did they see sense to get people to, to go home? Why keep them kind of locked in in that area for that long? So on Swan Street, uh, I think I tried to describe this uh, when I began. Uh, we had what was an indication uh, of an escalation of potential violence in the city. We had a large group uh, that was moving in violation of the curfew. Uh, our uh, approach to these cir circumstances, if we have somebody breaking the law in a large group. Uh, we try to get them uh, arrested as uh, safely and as respectfully as we can. Uh, I think there was a lot of misinformation uh, after some, some of the folks that uh, were, um, could have potentially been arrested uh, went into the home. I think there, there was a lot of misinformation uh, that was put out that raised a lot of concerns. I had multiple conversations uh, during the event, uh, after the event, uh, into early this morning with the mayor, uh, with my folks that were on the scene. Uh, and I can say that some of the information that was put out uh, on Twitter and other social media platforms uh, was completely inaccurate, uh, at least from what we saw. But of course, whenever you have those type of allegations, uh, we'll go back and take a very, very close look to ensure uh, that the police uh, were respectful and responsible, professional and constitutional uh, in conducting those arrests. Uh, every indication that I had uh, is when the arrests were being effectuated uh, there was no resistance by anybody that was being arrested. Can I just uh, uh, talk a little bit uh, about the, the, the arming of the National Guard? Uh, that is something that is exclusively within the, within the authority uh, of the President of the United States. Uh, I am very well aware from multiple conversations uh, with the mayor uh, of our stance here in the District of Columbia. Uh, we made it known uh, at every uh, meeting with regards to this event, uh, that we did not want the National Guard to be armed. Chief, with the uh, White House cordoned off by the Secret Service, do you have another night of, of protests coming? Do you have any indication of where you think protesters might gather? I know you probably don't want to say publicly, 
but are you prepared that we, given the White House taken away as, a, as an object of protest, that we could have more trouble elsewhere in the city tonight? With this is it's very fluid. Uh, we never know uh, exactly where they're going to go. We do. We're scouring social media to get some sense. Uh, as I mentioned before, the president uh, is moving today. Uh, that may be uh, where protesters may gather. Uh, I think if we, uh, the last four days is any indication, I think there's a strong likelihood that we will have protesters again down in and around the White House. And then we will be prepared, we'll be fully activated uh, to respond. Uh, the other, I think the other thing that I, I think that I sensed from your questions uh, the arrests that the Metropolitan Police Department made were all uh, after uh, multiple warnings uh, regarding a curfew that we were having uh, in this city. Uh, and the arrests were essentially to prevent uh, the extreme um, violence and destruction uh, that I know was heartbreaking to everybody in this room that had uh, occurred the two preceding nights. Uh, that was a very difficult decision. Uh, I have seen uh, the mayor struggle uh, with that decision uh, to negatively impact uh, the people who live and visit the District of Columbia. But that decision was made uh, to, to, to not break our hearts again last night, to see the violence and the destruction uh, and the injury that we saw. So, you know, I guess when you're the mayor of the District of Columbia, uh, you have to make difficult decisions. Uh, and so I was very proud of her to, to, to choose public safety uh, and to uh, prevent violence uh, over some inconvenience uh, to our folks. And hopefully we can get, back, get past this sooner rather than later. Could you clarify some numbers you gave? You said initially 54 were arrested for curfew violations, then you gave another number, one. So we had 50, 54 uh, that were at the 17th and I location. We had close to 200 up there uh, in the 14, 1500 block of Swan Street. Uh, and then in multiple locations throughout the city, uh, we exceeded uh, 300 arrests. For a curfew violation? Uh, the three charges that we have primarily are, most of them are curfew. Uh, we had some burglary and we had rioting arrests. More than 300 total. We're over 300 for sure. I'm sorry? We're talking about just uh, from last night's events. Last night, all we're time. over 300. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell us the logistics of. Are those three so, I, Mark, if this helps, I want to say, if my mem memory serves me correctly, uh, the first night that we had arrest was 18. Uh, the second night we had arrest was 88, uh, and then we're over 300 last night. And so, where are these people held? What is the process? Because we know with COVID, there you you guys have been trying not to incarcerate put people into, into jail or into holding cells. So what is the process with these people who have been arrested over the past three days? Where are they held? How long are they held? Can you help us out with that? So we do the best we can. Uh, arresting uh, large numbers of people is not something that we do on a daily basis. It's something that we do prepare for. Uh, we stand up uh, a group, a team of officers to facilitate uh, what's called mass arrest processing. Uh, it, uh, never goes as well as planned because there are IT issues and the like uh, that you have to deal with. Uh, there's logistical issues with uh, moving the folks. Uh, there's issues with uh, ensuring that the, the folks that are, have been stopped and placed under arrest uh, are treated uh, respectfully uh, and professionally. Uh, and we do all of those things and we give thought to all of those issues. And, and really our number one goal uh, when we process a large group like that uh, is to get them in and out of police custody as quickly as possible. If I was to go to the U.S. Attorney's Office, and I, do, I can't confirm this, but the U.S. Attorney's Office has, has now process, dropped the charges against the people who arrested Friday to Saturday. Are you aware of that in any action? I think that there will be, uh, you know, when we're done with this operational period, there'll be a lot of discussions about that issue. Uh, and so I, I can't really comment on that right now. I don't know exactly how many cases were no papered or under what circumstances. There could very well be. And, uh, you know, when a case is no papered, that does not necessarily mean uh, it's the end of, of uh, the prosecutors that they could go back and they may want video, they may want additional evidence. And that's where our investigative efforts will begin. Yes. One quick question on the timeline of yesterday. I mean, how does it make you feel that you were given such little warning 
prior to the presidential movement that was unplanned. I mean, there's typically a good relationship with. That's not unusual for yeah. That's not unusual for unplanned uh, presidential movements here in the city. The president uh, and the vice president will often make unplanned moves, uh, and they will uh, notify us uh, when the, you know because it's unplanned. Uh, the president sometimes has to respond to things that are outside of his schedule, and our federal partners will notify us and let us let us know. So that was not un that was not unusual. Are you concerned at all that that damages the relationship now that people on the streets have with police? That it changes the optics? That it what's may, what's that? that? What the fact that the use of force was um, so. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm concerned whenever uh, there's a police action that paints police officers in a negative light because uh, what folks will do is they will attribute it, that to all of us. Uh, so yes, I, I would say uh, whenever uh, police action is done in a way that people, uh, it, it's either true or perceived to be uh, negative by the police, I, that concerns me personally. Can you channel that back to the federal authorities who may have been more involved in that action yesterday? I, I would like to have more information on what the thought process was on the action before I comment, and that's just the nature of you know me. I think the the mayor is more in tune to her gut reaction. Uh, I want to get a little bit more information, and, and of course, if I saw something that I thought was untoward, I would talk to my federal partners about it. Mayor, you have a reaction to that? Well, I've already talked about that, but I will say this, and I've I've tried to make this distinction, um, and hopefully, I've done it well, but the but let me say again that the Metropolitan Police Department, the Secret Service, and the Park Police work together all the time, dozens of times in, in Lafayette Park and many more demonstrations and presentations. So I want us all to be careful about um, painting that relationship negatively or um, uh, just en masse those law enforcement agencies, because after we're all all, it's all said and done, and all of us are gone. We're going to have Metro MPD and Park Police and Secret Service are going to be working together um, in our city. So beyond tweeting it's shameful, uh, how do you channel that? How do you get that back to those um, who may have been involved in the decision making there to say this is not okay in the district, et cetera? We will have ongoing conversations. Um, we will continue, but right, right now at hand, we have a response. Um, and we are in, uh, we have an emergency response in the district and we're gonna continue to work with um, all of the federal agencies who are here. We're gonna continue to let the people know who are responsible um, for these decisions that how wrong we think it is and how it doesn't make us safer. Mayor Bowser, what worries you more? Is it the prospect of more uh, property damage or is it the prospect of more clashes as a result of federal forces ramping up in DC? They all worry me. I don't have the luxury of not being worried about the safety and protection of every aspect of the District of Columbia. Our police community relations, uh, people's first uh, right to demonstrate peaceably uh, in the District of Columbia, uh, mayhem. Uh, in the District of Columbia, including spat smashing windows and looting, I, I don't have the luxury of picking the one that I want to deal with. I have to deal with them all. Thank yes. Mayor um, Bowser, did the president's ominous message, as you described it, make matters worse? Is there something he could say today that would calm things down? I can say this. Um, I don't think that uh, our the military should be used on the streets of American cities against Americans. And I definitely don't think it should be done for a show. Uh, Chief Newsom, could you explain the role of Unified Command? What triggers it? Um, what law enforcement agency? Who's in charge at the top making the decisions? Sure, I, I, I talked about that uh, in great detail, I want to say, when we discussed uh, operations on Saturday. Uh, whenever you establish unified command, you bring in uh, decision makers uh, from the agencies that are involved in, uh, in Washington, D.C. Those agencies have specific uh, and inconsistent uh, jurisdictions. And the idea behind unified command is to come up with a collective decision. So what, what triggers establishing unified command? 
uh, when you're going to have an operation that involves multiple agencies. Are there multiple agencies in the city right now? There are. So we have we have a, a number of command posts set up throughout the city where uh, federal and local partners can communicate, including uh, our jock uh, at police headquarters. Uh, three things real quick. Um, were there any uh, charges for wearing a mask last night? Not that I am aware of. I can't, uh, w for wearing a mask? Yeah. So uh, I think there's some confusion about that charge. Uh, in the District of Columbia, uh, wearing a mask, and certainly wearing a mask to protect yourself from COVID is not illegal. Uh, so the only time that wearing a mask is illegal is if you place a mask on with the intent to commit a crime. So I don't, I can't remember the last time we made an arrest like that, but I don't think there would be one last night. Was there any pepper spray deployed inside one of those residences last night on Swan Street? I've asked that question multiple times. We are going to probably have uh, multiple body-worn cameras that we are going to have to review before I can say with 100% certainty. Uh, but from the command officials that were on the scene, the answer to your question is no. Where were the munitions used last night? In, in the area around judiciary. Our munitions in the area around judiciary was pepper, built, pepper balls and pepper spray? Pepper spray, uh, CS gas was used, and um, sting balls. There may have been other deployments, uh, as I indicated earlier, of pepper spray and potentially uh, sting balls. I don't have all of that in front of me right now. In, but it, if it was, it was on a very limited nature. And that was to disperse a crowd that was when uh, we are forming lines uh, to make arrests of multiple individuals, sometimes there are skirmishes on those lines and pepper spray can be deployed in those instances to push folks back. Uh, but uh, I heard, uh, particularly with the arrest, I heard over the radio as I was monitoring that uh, the command official was telling officers not to deploy munitions because once the group was, was closed in, he was telling them because they have nowhere to escape and he thought it would be unsafe which was a very good call by that command official and may i just add chief and i don't um i don't know if this was the case last night but it was certainly the case um during um during our response that some of the bangs or pops uh heard are the demonstrators that have fireworks and other other things that have been used throughout this weekend um, so, and I know sometimes I, I was reading along that people say, I heard a bang, I heard a pop, and that's not necessarily a police munition. Yes, sir. Um, so I think the countdown is three council members have asked you or called on the curfew to be rescinded. Any thought about that happening or any thought about it being extended beyond tonight? Uh, let me, um, uh, we have made no uh, decisions about extending it uh, beyond tonight. Uh, and we have thought long and hard about the curfew time uh, and have debated it um, about, especially as it relates to voting and how we can send a clear message um, that you can vote all the way through eight o'clock. Um, and we're gonna continue to amplify that message. But finally, uh, it, it boiled down to a public safety decision uh, and that we uh, saw people leaving um, to be compliant with the curfew. And when that happens, that allows the police to focus on the people who are bent on um, breaking the law and being destructive. So we think that it was uh, to the good over a couple of nights um, for public safety. Yes. Um, one quick question to, in for the chief about the use of that, I guess, military helicopter, low flying to disperse the crowd. Just what are your thoughts on that as a tactic, both safety wise and then kind of the ripple effect of how it makes people then view law enforcement? Uh, that uh, was a federal asset. Uh, that decision was uh, was made, made by a federal agency to do that. Uh, I don't know uh, if it was helpful. I can say that. Um, I, I don't know if it was helpful and, and if uh, asked in the future if that was a helpful tactic, uh, my response would be no. And then, and then Mayor, can I ask you about voting? Uh, have you voted yet? What are your plans for voting? I'm going to vote after this. Yes. 
Well, let, let's say we just for everybody watching, this is our primary. Um, and we have in the District of Columbia, I think six council races that are on the ballot. Uh, four, four wards will be nominating a council member and two, I guess two, only one of the at-large is, is on the ballot now for the Democratic primary. Uh, this year, uh, because of COVID and the pandemic, uh, there has been a heavy focus over the last several um, weeks. I think one of the first, uh, probably in the first week where we are, were at the DOH Command Center, the uh, chairman of the Board of Elections briefed the public about how the Board of Elections would focus on mail-in ballots. The concern was, um, that because of COVID, people would not want to go to in-person voting. Uh, there was also a concern about poll workers, um, not, not being able to recruit poll workers um, because of COVID. Uh, and uh, the decision was made to go to 20, by the board, to go to 22 voting centers across the district and heavily emphasize mailing in the ballot. Uh, I don't have all the numbers in front of me, Mark, but there have been a heavy uh, requests for mail-in ballots, and a lot of people across the District of Columbia have already voted. If you were one of those people who requested a mail-in ballot, you have to mail it in uh, today. It has to be postmarked today uh, for it to count. Uh, if you're one of the people who wants to vote in person, uh, in-person voting has been open uh, since May the 22nd every day with the exception of Memorial Day. Uh, and today is the last day to vote in, in person, election day. Uh, and polls are open until 8 p.m. Uh, I've been struck by the light traffic at all of the voting centers throughout uh, this period, which suggests to me that a lot of people are taking advantage of mailing in um, their ballots. Um, and so, which is, which is also factored in uh, to uh, our decision. Uh, so people go out and vote, you can do it now. You can vote at any of the 22 sites um, regardless of where you live and uh, all of your races, uh, your council race, if you vote outside of your ward, uh, will still appear on your ballot. Uh, so, so go vote. And I don't do that type of politics from this podium, but I'm, I'm happy to let you know where I'm going to go vote and I'll tell you all about my choices. What would you say to residents tonight who might be frustrated that they might not get results tonight because of there will still be outstanding mail-in ballots? That need to be I think that's going to feel unusual for Washingtonians. Um, people from the other Washington will tell you that's how it works. If you want to do mail-in ballots, you don't get the results that night. Um, that's just how that's just how it is. Uh, you can't have it both ways. Um, so. Uh, I will feel personally frustrated by that, but I'll get over it. And they'll let us know when um, they expect to count all the ballots. But I think they allow at least, I think, and I, I'm not sure, but I think they were allow at least 10 days for the mail-in ballots to arrive. Yes. The, the, the elections office said this morning that when it, that after the polls close at eight, or probably before nine, they will release all the today's voting and all of the ballots that they have, in fact, counted up to this point, which is about 30,000. Okay. So we recognize that they'll have many more to go. So you'll get some indication that you won't have results like we know. Got it. But, uh, my last question. Though, At the voting, they said that for the voting centers or the mail-in ballots as well. For the, vote, the 20 voting centers today and all absentee ballots that have been counted okay. through today. I got it. This morning was about 30,000. Got it. But there'll be many more after that. I have a question for the chief. Chief, uh, for people who want to protest peacefully today. I'm, uh, I'm glad you're not asking me who I'm voting for. <laughs> I'll, I'll follow up. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I thought it was an inappropriate question. But no. <laughs> it's okay. Um, for people who want to peacefully protest today, there are people out near the National Shrine right now. Can you assure the citizens that those who are pe protesting peacefully 
will not be subject to anything actions by your department or by any of the federal agencies that are now in the city and are feeling more emboldened to take actions against civil disobedience or not civil disobedience, but civil We, uh, as always, welcome peaceful protesters in the District of Columbia. Uh, if you ask me why uh, the protests have not been able to, uh, last night were not be, uh, able to continue past 7 p.m., uh, it was because of the agitators who destroyed our city. They, they are really the ones that are responsible uh, for silencing the voice of the people uh, who want that, their voice to be heard. Uh, and so I think that it would be nice to get through this so we can get our protesters back out to, to, so people can hear their voice. Thank you.